Over the years, the best of the West has captured some incredible moments on camera. From epic to emotional. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Beautiful to brave. We've flown drones over giraffes in Namibia and natural wonders in the States. One place that continues to provide us with great footage year after year is with the team from Total Outdoor Adventures in British Columbia. Three years ago, friend of the show John Shafter not only knocked his mountain goat down, but took out our camera in the process. Total Outdoor Adventures always makes for thrilling footage, whether it's jet boats, bears, or buggies. It's always a good time with Vinny and his team. Hi, I'm Vince Cachola from Total Outdoor Adventures. We've been outfitting in British Columbia for the last 20 years, mainly in southern BC and northern British Columbia. All our hunts are fair chase hunts, starting off from elk, mule deer, whitetail. We have wolf, mountain lion, lynx, bobcat, uh, shirus moose and Canadian moose, and bighorn sheep and mountain goats. I was able to meet Best of the West in 2014 on a Marco Polo hunt and use their Huskama system. I harvested a ram at over 500 yards. From that point on, I was sold on Best of the West. It's a great shooting system and a lot of clients in the past have missed a lot of big game animals and I really recommend that when you come on a big game hunt, you have a good system. I'm really excited to be hunting with Total Outdoor Adventures. We're going to be moose hunting. Uh, I've never moose hunted. I've never hunted in Canada. I've been to Canada several times. Uh, moose hunting is one of the things that's always been really high on my bucket list of hunts to do. Jared and I built very specific guns for this hunt. I went ahead and built the 375 Mountain Scout. It's our lightest weight, shortest gun. It fits in a pack. We decided to put on our new 5 to 20 tactical with the 34 millimeter tube. The other thing I really like in it, it has illuminated reticle when you get into the low light stuff. And it's got a level bubble in it, which is really crucial. I personally believe in a hunting situation, you never know what position you're gonna be in. When you start stretching it out there, a level can make the difference of whether you make a good shot or a bad shot, definitely. So for this hunt, I chose to build a signature series rifle built by Best of the West. I, I elected to use the new Hornady round, um, the 300 PRC. The reason I chose the 300 PRC is because I knew that for a moose in Canada that I wanted um, a lot of knockdown power and not, not just a lot of knockdown power, but a lot of knockdown power at extended ranges because I knew the opportunity might come where I might have to take an 800 yard shot and, and with the 300 PRC shooting the, the factory ammo, I knew the 212 grain ELDXs would do the job. When it comes to moose hunting, bullet performance is critical. As one of the biggest mammals in North America, moose are some of the toughest customers to bring down. Shot placement combined with the dependability of Hornady ammunition provides instant results. When the best of the West continues, it's off to Moose Camp with the team from Total Outdoor Adventures. Keep it right here. Generally, by the last few days of September, the bulls are well into the rut. However, with warmer weather in the past few days, the bulls have been awfully quiet for this time of the year. Cow calling during the rut is by far the most effective way to hunt moose in this area. Thick timber and limited vantage points make spot and stock hunting far more challenging. But when the bulls won't come to you, the only option left is to go out looking for them. So one afternoon, we, we took the jet boat out to get to this big rock that's just kind of down in the, in the bottom of the valley.
the only way to get to it was with the jet boat and you could get up on that rock and you could see you could see a long ways and you could see a lot of swamp in all directions we never did get eyes on a moose up there the most exciting thing that happened was when Vince said he was gonna try to fool Danielle into eating some moose droppings. I'm gonna go over there and uh, hey, I'm gonna go over there and uh, watch out, watch out. <laughs> Kinda at the prime time when you were you'd expect to see something if something was gonna come out. That's when the wolves started howling. You know, we've been calling for a while. We ran into that in several different areas. And, and you know, once the wolves start howling, it's just time to pack up and, and move to a different spot. Joining Daryl and Jared this week in Moose Camp is pro dealer John Black. Last year, John taught a best of the West shooting school combined with a bear hunt and finished out the shooting course taking a bear of his own from 600 yards away. This week, John will be targeting an area known for big bulls with his guide, Josh Dubay. Now this area is an area I've hunted a lot of times for black bear and had real good success here and seen a lot of moose and I've always wanted to go for Canadian moose here. Uh, talked to a lot of the old timers here and they always said if you want the big ones you got to go to spike camp. So that's where I'm headed. Uh, it's going to be pretty rough terrain. We're going to actually get on the quad for probably three hours and go about 10 miles. The adventure is getting ready to begin. So I headed down to the lake on, on the night we got there. Didn't even sit down and, and pulled my binoculars out and saw a bull moose across the lake from us, about 600 yards. It was a small moose, but at least in my mind, hey, we're in the right area, there are moose here. So we watched him for a little while and, uh, and then got ready for the next day's hunt. On the second day of the hunt, it was even better. We saw a, a cow, a calf, and another small bull moose, and it was really interesting. We watched them probably for about four hours. Uh, a couple of them were swimming in the lake, and they weren't really swimming from side to side. They just out there looked like they were having a good time swimming in the sun. Very cool thing to see. Over the next two days, John would be presented with more opportunities at Young Bulls. With rut activity increasing each day, John patiently waits to see what other bulls are in the area. So my theory is whenever you're in a good spot and you know in your gut that it's a good spot, you stick with it. Sooner or later, it's gonna happen. We had the perfect habitat. We had the perfect lake there. We had food for them to eat. And we were seeing a few moose. So we were gonna stick with this spot till the end. Well, sure enough, that afternoon, Josh did a couple of cow calls and then it started happening. We heard a whack, whack across the lake. The bull was raking the brush and all of a sudden he started grunting. Oh. Uh, uh. He was coming in probably for about 20 seconds. We didn't see him, but I went ahead and got the rifle ready. And I thought, man, it's getting ready to happen. This is going to be the minute. And sure enough, Josh says, I've got him, got him spotted. And so I got down, got into my scope and got him in the scope, called for the range. Josh said 572 yards. Thank goodness we had the Huskama advantage because this bull was moving pretty fast. We only had a small clearing for him to be in and he was only out there for about 20 to 30 seconds. So sure enough, here he came, Josh called the yardage and I took the shot. Got 
the first shot was a really solid hit. He just stood there and I decided, yeah, we better put another one in him. And sure enough, we put another one in him and he rolled down to the lake. Couldn't be more excited. Dead move, buddy. <laughs> So we got in a rowboat and paddled across the lake to get the moose. One of the easiest extractions I've ever seen, if you can call it that for an animal that probably weighs close to a thousand pounds. He actually landed right by the lake, thank goodness he didn't go into the lake, but uh, we were able to get the boat within three feet of him and easy extraction. We actually just quartered him, walked a few feet and set the quarters in the boat. We did have to make two trips though because the boat was only rated for 800 pounds with Josh and I in there and our gear. Uh, it, it was sitting pretty low in the water, so we had to come back for a second trip to get the cape and the horns and the head. But uh, it was definitely worth it. I can't tell you how much fun we had here in British Columbia. This was definitely the trip of a lifetime. The patience game has played out nicely for John Black and Guy Josh. Over on the other side of the mountain, Vinny and the team have decided to take matters into their own hands and cut trail into some new country that looks promising. So we uh, ended up cutting a trail with the Argo. Me and Scotty were running chainsaws and everybody else was throwing trees and brush and branches that we were cutting off. And of course, Vince was driving the Argo, dragging the boat with all our load of camp and everything we had basically packed. You know, and it, it was a lot of work. It made it all the more rewarding in the end, you know, and that, it's, it's not something you normally do when you go hunting unless it's just you and a buddy going up hunting somewhere near near home and you're trying to get into a spot nobody's been into. So Vince gave us that choice. It wasn't, oh, we're just gonna keep doing what we have been doing or we're gonna go here and try this spot. It was, it, you know, he, he really let us decide. So after six days of hunting, the weather kind of screwed us up um, for a lot of those days and our camera guy had to leave kind of on short notice for another hunt that he had to film. Um, so I took over the, the camera position. In all honesty, hunting is not always about um, the killing, it's about the experience, it's about getting outdoors with the people you enjoy being around. Kind of when we got settled in for the evening, Vinny had got a message on his inReach from the other camp with, uh, from I believe the guide was Josh. He'd messaged and said they'd killed a nice bull with John Black at the camp that they'd went to. So we were starting to feel the pressure. We only had a couple days left and still hadn't had a moose. With ideal calling conditions, it doesn't take long for the first bull to respond. With a morning hunt off to a great start, the guys hunker down in hopes that a bigger bull is soon to follow. Keep it right here on the Best of the West, your long range hunting authority. The Best of the West is brought to you by The Wild Sheep Foundation Hunt and Fool 
the best of the West shooting systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. For more information about hunting with Total Outdoor Adventures and to book your next hunt, please call Vince at 250-421-8085 or visit online at www.toaltd.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. And sure enough, out pops a bull and a cow about, I don't know, roughly 80 yards away in the wide open. He was a, he was a very young bull, you know, he, his, his antlers weren't much bigger than his ears. So we waited and called a little bit more to see if any, uh, anything else might come out with him or might be hanging out in the back. And after we decided to head back in, we got probably 20, 30 yards back into the trees and here comes Chad running and says, well, Danielle's on the, on the boat launch point calling and she's got a moose at the opposite end of the lake. So we took off running. So she kept calling back there and sure enough, the moose comes out. It's another young bull. When we walked down there and got to the point where she was, she'd had another bull, a fourth bull called. And he, right when we got there, he just popped out to the water. And you, you could tell he was trying to figure out exactly where he was hearing that call. And once he pinpointed it, he, he'd start barking and Danielle comes running, there's a bull over here. There's a bull, you know? And so we kind of walk back to them to see where the bull is. And sure enough, it's right exactly where we'd spiked out, right across from where we expected them to be. And you could see instantly I had good paddles. It looked like a pretty good moose. It was almost too good to be true to come around the corner and there he was just standing broadside, you know? So Jared and I and, and Vince kind of crawled over to our spot and got all set up. The moose is standing in the lake at this point. I've got my crosshairs on him. I'm ready to shoot, I'm, I'm calm, I'm confident. It was only 352 yards. I had all these ideas before we even got there where I was gonna shoot this moose. And for whatever reason, when I kind of lined up on him and actually had crosshairs on a moose, I decided I wanted to go a little bit lower in the shoulder. So I had a better chance of breaking that offside leg if, if nothing else. I was like, well, should we, I let him at least step out on the bank and Vince was like, no, just, just shoot him, you know? So I was ready. I checked, make sure Jared was ready and sent one down there with that 300 grain bullet and it never took a step. When we started to paddle over there, we realized, well, he was a little further out in the lake than we thought. When it came time to put the waders on and go get him, you were, you are you know, about belly button deep in water and the moose is sunk to the bottom and about the only thing hanging out is a paddle. and It's gonna be some work getting it out of there. It was everything I would have expected out of a, a moose hunt in Canada. Got a beautiful moose here, 45 plus. Uh, it's kind of what you can expect for Canadian moose. Um, this one will be pushing a little bit past 45. Good mature bull, uh, we hunted hard. We called four bulls in this morning and then uh, passed them all up. So uh, could have tagged out there. Came over to this lake and uh, we ended up, actually it was Danielle. Danielle and Chad, they spotted the bull. We were able to put a stalk on it and Daryl made a great shot. Uh, it's just a lot of fun as an outfitter. It's uh, awesome to hunt with your daughter. She's a great guy and uh, we had a good trip. The Best of the West would like to thank the entire team at Total Outdoor Adventures for a great week of hunting. Join us next time for more long range hunting adventures. Cause of death, lead poisoning and drowning. I don't think he's gonna use that. <laughs> I wanna say it would be sweet if I had a script right here or some shit.